Hi, my name is uh, Raman Sermacher. I work at Yandex and I'm going to tell you about uh, design and implementation of uh, database management system asynchronous client, client uh, library. Uh, I, uh, would, uh, I will speak not only for myself but also for my colleagues who are involved into development uh, of uh, uh, the library that I uh, uh, will show you as example for this talk. Uh, Sergey Handrikov and uh, Dmitry Petipalov. So I will start to um, give you some background about uh, my team, uh, what we are doing. So we, we work on mail service. So it's, it, it is both uh, uh, protocols, SMTP, IMAP, uh, and uh, web. Uh, we have a lot of users' data, like uh, messages, uh, metadata, settings, uh, filters, a uh, lot of others. Uh, and we store it uh, basically in persistent storages. So everything except uh, body of messages and uh, uh, logs. So and since we have uh, user's data, it should be consistent because nobody wants to have uh, mass in their mailboxes, uh, like uh, somehow deleted uh, message or uh, message in wrong folder or something like this. Uh, we also uh, want to have uh, uh, run our code fast uh, because we want to spend less money for hardware. We want to maintain less amount of, of uh, uh, like instances of uh, processes and this kind of thing. And of course, we want to provide user to see uh, uh, the result of uh, his request as soon as possible, like uh, in, uh, in, in their ability of perception. Uh, we have a uh, uh, microservice architecture and uh, almost all of our, our services are uh, written in C++. So we, we do this. Okay, and uh, we have a uh, deal with, uh, uh, I already said that we have had a lot of users, a lot of data, so we have deal with high load, uh, only our metadata stored in over uh, 100 database shards, and uh, the size is over uh, for hundreds of terabytes. We have 200 million of users and each day we have uh, uh, over 10 million uh, of active users. So to um, so to to store the data we use PostgreSQL database management system. Uh, we do it uh, for a couple of reasons. So it is a relation of database. Uh, uh, we, we have uh, uh, strong uh, uh, schemas. Uh, so it, it, uh, it helps us uh, also, we use composite types because our schemes are not always normalized uh, for optimization reasons. So, uh, PostgreSQL supports uh, uh, arrays, uh, 
and some other types. Also, we use a lot of uh, uh, our custom types, uh, for example, to uh, to store s like some structural data in uh, uh, in one row of the table, uh, and we use uh, binary protocol to uh, communicate with this database uh, because it. It like uh, allows us to reduce uh, networking usage and uh, uh, to uh, to proceed data faster. So for the library, we need a couple of things. Uh, so we want first minimize runtime cost. We uh, Library just need to be like uh, uh, very uh, thin between our business logic and uh, database. Uh, we also want, want uh, from it to uh, help us avoid mistakes because uh, because it, it, it really helps to write code. Uh, that, for example, just wouldn't compile if you did something wrong. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of code, so uh, we, we just want, want to spend time uh, on debugging after uh, reading something not so good. Uh, and it should be simple to use. Uh, if you have uh, like some very little microservice and you just need to do one request for a database, uh, you don't have to like write a bunch of code just, just because the library requires. You just need to like a couple of lines and that's all. So um, we, we want to make uh, one more library, but of course there are uh, some uh, already written in C++, not only, uh, but uh, not so much and uh, they are not so good. Uh, I will not uh, here provide you the full overview, but uh, let's look just for a couple examples. The first one is libpku, it's just like standard choice. Uh, but you know it's written in C, and uh, for C++ code, it's uh, just uh, uh, weird to use it. Um, so it, it requires a lot of boilerplate code because uh, actually it provides only the protocol and uh, um, don't have a de any deal with uh, uh, with uh, making a request for you just to, like by calling one function. You need to, d to do a lot to do this. Uh, like one step uh, forward but two back is libpqx6. Uh, it, it's written in C++, but uh, it has the advantages. It, uh, it doesn't uh, provide a binary protocol on the text and uh, it, it's uh, it's very uh, so we, we just can use it so and also it provides only synchronous input output this is also not so good for us so, so uh, we we just want, don't want to use it. So the first our proposal is to make this library with asynchronous I/O. You can always, if you need, uh, make from asynchronous I/O uh, synchronous, but usually we don't do this. Um, we want to do it as much as possible in compile time because we just don't want to spend uh, uh, time to do some things in runtime. Um, we want to 
to make uh, to, to provide help with uh, code mistakes, uh, do what compile and runtime checks. Uh, for example, you don't want to uh, put uh, in query parameter string instead of uh, number or uh, get result uh, into run type. So it uh, matters. And we want to uh, provide customizable interface because um, we already uh, have a lot of code and uh, that uses a different library, but we don't want to uh, rewrite it like in single, uh, like, like at, at once. We want to do it step by step. So we want to somehow to uh, adjust uh, our the written code to, uh, to the new interface. So the library, uh, it's named Ozo, uh, which uh, goes from the Japan uh, uh, word Zo, uh, which means elephant. Elephant is uh, PostgreSQL logo. So um, I. <laughs> So, so if, if you want to know like uh, some more about the name, I just ask uh, Sergey Handrikov. Yeah, he's right here. Um, so, how many of you have uh, uh, has or had a deal with databases, and how many with uh, networking? So, okay, uh, I just. Uh, so, so okay, you you know there is a connection between uh, server and client, and uh, usually it, it, it's really uh, um, it it, it costs much uh, to establish this connection. Uh, so um, then after you have connection, you just need to. Send query text, query parameters, get result. Result could be uh, in multiple uh, messages. So, basic model. No, no, like it, it's uh, uh, more complex than HTTP, but uh, but it's not so bad. Uh, so let's start with brief example. Uh, so I I would just try to point you. So we have deal with uh, Bustasio. So we have input output context to provide uh, like scheduler for all operations. Uh, so to like make request at first, we need to uh, register our custom types. Uh, we it is required because we need to. Uh, to be sure, uh, is uh, is database uh, really accepted? Uh, is uh, we can get? Uh, is we get really what we want? Uh, so the next step we uh, make a connection provider connection info. It just knows about uh, how to connect to database and uh, can establish connection. Also, we can wrap it by uh, connection pool. I, I mean to decorate it, uh, to like, make it more real, because you, you don't want to establish connection every time. You just need to uh, store connections in, in some place. Uh, then you can make a query. So. We uh, so I I will talk later about how it works. So basically, just uh, C plus plus seventeen uh, literals, the template literals. So uh, I will talk later. Uh, then we have uh, to declare a result type. Uh, 
And uh, actually, uh, behind this, no code. We we use uh, Boost Hana, so it it it, it helps us a lot with this. Uh, then we define the result. Uh, so it it. Uh, Mm. So we, we want the user to uh, maintain the lifetime for uh, the result and uh, uh, to provide place because it's uh, more flexible. And after, in, finally, we can make a request and we can provide like any uh, completion token to uh, to get. To, to handle asynchronous separation. Uh, for this example, it will return uh, the future. So connection is just future for... Uh, so already mentioned that we use Postasio, so uh, it, it would be easy to us to switch uh, uh, to networking when it became uh, the part of uh, standard, uh, we use Boost HANA. Mm. It, it provides us introspection for types and help us to uh, take a lot of boilerplate code from uh, the user uh, to serialize and deserialize types. We use Boost Spirit for query configuration. Uh, both to make a grammar and to parse it. Uh, we provide a universal asynchronous interface. It means you can uh, use any token you want, callback, future, uh, coroutine. Uh, we bind parameters. Uh, so we, we, we just don't, don't want to have any deal with SQL injections. Uh, so the parameter just goes in different buffer to a database and uh, you just you, you just couldn't make any. Uh, we use binary protocol to uh, transfer data. It helps us uh, save a lot uh, runtime cost. Uh, so connection. Uh, for databases, key point of library, uh, I would talk about it. Uh, so, it, 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 so the connection requires a couple of abilities. So we, at this point, we don't really care about the structure of connection. Uh, we just want to make sure that uh, it, it just makes what we want. So. Because we uh, use, uh, uh, because we have a deal with network, uh, there is a socket, so it, it should provide socket. Uh, connection also should know about uh, the types. Uh, what we have, what database ha has, uh, because um, <clears throat> only when. Only after you establish the connection, you can uh, get from the database uh, which types it contains. Uh, so it's like the, the first possibility. Uh, also, it should provide error context. Uh, so the reason is because uh, Uh, boost error code and uh, standard error code uh, can provide only a number for error, but when you have deal with database, it can return you just like some text when you have a syntax error in your query or when there is some uh, uh, exception in uh, your function or something like this. So you need to just some place to store a message for uh, for error, and uh, you can uh, store uh, 
some stat statistic storage in connection to count, for example, how many um, how many requests you done, how many, for example, what is the speed or uh, how many errors you have. So um, the connection I already mentioned. Uh, N not not really uh, constructed, but provided by uh, special uh, types. So, so we we can do both like uh, just simple connection or uh, or pool. So, uh, because we want. Uh, Because we want uh, to uh, to have an abilities uh, for connection and for and also for connection provider. So the, the connection provider is is not actual uh, some class. It's just like uh, also uh, something that should provide abilities. So we can do this with uh, concepts. So. C++ now doesn't really have it, but we can emulate them uh, by using uh, by using just a constant um, template constants, uh, which just tell us is our type a concept. Uh, so is, is it a pro is it uh, uh, is it provide all of abilities from concept, or is it not? Uh, so the connection provider is uh, uh, is the first one. Uh, so the, the connection, like I already told, should provide abilities. So we we just want to 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 have a, to have a, a function that just will get us uh, something. From the connection, so the socket, uh, the bound type, server context statistics, and uh, it is uh, very flexible because a user can always just implement uh, this function functions and doesn't need any inheritance, doesn't need any uh, virtual functions. So. Uh, the user just can do what user users just can do what they want. Just like I declare my type, I store in it uh, what I want. I, I I doesn't know anything about uh, like base class for uh, for the connection. I I just uh, provide uh, functions that just return what uh, what library wants. So the next question is what if uh, our connection uh, type uh, required to be stored in some kind of pointer uh, usually it's a shared pointer when we have a deal with asynchronous um, operations because uh, we have uh, like usually more than one reference uh, uh, for our value so for this, uh, we also can make a concept uh, which just check uh, is our type, type uh, uh, a pointer or not. And so, so basically, we just uh, uh, do it like some wrapper for our type. Uh, to, to integrate uh, this uh, in, into library, we can define special function. To uh, to get type unwrapped or not if it is not wrapped, uh, so in, it's uh, it's uh, it, it's convenient and if you had uh, uh, like inheritance, it, it 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 wouldn't be so easy to do this. You you just 
uh, should have a lot of uh, code for this. Um, so to uh, bring together the connection concept and connection wrapper concept, uh, there is concept connectable, so it has uh, both uh, abilities of connection and connection wrapper. Uh, so my concept, uh, so I already mentioned custom implementation, but uh, it, it's like not only for the user, it, okay? Could you just go back one slide for one second? Okay, if you have any questions, uh, so you can ask uh, free. Mm. So and another reason is uh, tests. So of course, uh, this kind of library should has a lot of uh, unit tests because it has a lot of logic and uh, you just don't want to, 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 to make integration test for each case because uh, it costs to uh, to run database uh, for each test, like it's uh, it's not good idea. And uh, concept uh, helps us here too. We we just define our custom implementation for uh, for our types for connection, for example, and uh, we're done. So we we just uh, do it. So another reason we can. Mm, uh, minimize runtime overhead. Uh, so, uh, so I already talked about inheritance and this stuff. Uh, okay, wrappers. Uh, okay, but uh, of course uh, it's uh, not so bright. Uh, we have uh, uh, some problems with concepts. Uh, so, okay, we. Uh, we make a mistake in this uh, kind of code and we just get uh, like uh, a lot of pages, compiler output and just try to figure out uh, where we made a mistake. So it it's, uh, could be really awful to maintain this code, to, cha to change this, especially for if you're not an author of this code and you just want to like add some feature and uh, it it's could be really bad. Uh, uh, so, and the library has only template code, and uh, which this means uh, compile time should be uh, really bad. Uh, yes, it is. It is really bad, and uh, so <laughs> you know th there is always somebody who complains about compile time. Uh, so I. I actually know some people who just don't want to use boost because of compile time, just because of it. And it's uh, like, uh, yeah, it, it, it ha it, they have a point, but uh, it seems strange because uh, I think the future of C++ uh, will, uh, <laughs> will make something with this. Uh, so some kind of solutions is already here. We can use static asserts. We can check uh, our custom implementation uh, just to make sure that uh, we did it right and uh, we wouldn't get a lot of pages of compiler output, just one single message. So, uh, type system is uh, matters uh, in communication with database because uh, so database ha have has a lot of types uh, built in. Uh, we want to define our custom. We don't want to mess around it. We don't want to like uh, to put one type into uh, the value of one type to another. Uh, so the PostgreSQL. Uh, Uh, so let's look how it, uh, uh, how it is in PostgreSQL. Uh, each type ha has an object identifier and store it uh, uh, in special table. So um, all uh, built-in types has uh, uh, 
predefined object identifiers uh, in uh, the code of uh, database management system. So you just can copy that code into your library and it, 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 uh, it works. So you don't have to uh, make a query to database to know the identifiers of uh, types like boo or int. But uh, for But, sorry. Uh, but, but for user steps, you need to do this. So you need to do a special query. And uh, it is required because if you want to use binary protocol for each value in query parameter, you should provide uh, object identifier. So you need to know, uh, to know it. Uh, so let's look back to our example. Uh, so, okay, here we just uh, register some types and also you might be noticed that we, uh, we don't provide any value of uh, register types because at this point we, we, just have, we just have like map of types. We, we don't really have an object identifiers and uh, because of that we, 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 just need, we just don't need a value. So, how can we define our custom type? Uh, in database, we have special like, syntax for this. We can do a special query. In our library, we want to uh, like to want to avoid a lot of boilerplate. So we we can use. Uh, uh, HANA introspection or fusion introspection. So, all what you need just to uh, def just to define this macro for your type, and so in the euro set. So it, it's like uh, <laughs> when it uh, became uh, the part of standard, it would be uh, so much easier. Also, we require some. Uh, meta information about our type. So this is a macro, but uh, it uh, it doesn't require to be a macro. So there are just uh, a couple of boilerplate code. Just define some type, define some text for the type, uh, define where is name stored. Uh, so the reason is because. Uh, the name for your type can differ in your code and in, in your database. For example, you can add scheme for, for the name. Uh, and another thing is uh, this, uh, the size of type. So, for example, uh, in type uh, we have a fixed size, but uh, uh, since we he have here uh, strings, so it, it now it's uh, dynamic, so we, we don't want it to compile time the size of uh, a value of this type. So we uh, store uh, all of uh, types object identifiers since special map uh, called OIT map. Uh, since we uh, registered it, we can set uh, for for the type uh, OID, object ID, I mean, uh, we can get it uh, and uh, we can check is uh, uh, whether uh, ID ob object identifier uh, is uh, match for this type. Uh, to to, to, to store the types, we use uh, HANA map. So the key key for in this map is the type. So it, it integral constant. So it uh, ha, has uh, zero uh, uh, runtime overhead, and uh, the value is uh, is a number. So if you want to like uh, get uh, object identifier for uh, not existing type in uh, the map, you just uh, have compile error. 
So it's really nice. Um, so how can we uh, construct query to database? Uh, query Builder is a tool to make it from your code. Just when you know your query, it's compile time and you just, just want to build it. So look uh, to our example back here. So we, uh, so we use a special uh, definition for special over overloading for operator pos, a special literal SQL, and we uh, we just attach, uh, we, we just bind the values into query. So uh, let's look closer how to how, how it how it works. Mm. So the query text. Uh, could be defined not as as value but as type. So, uh, if you have all of symbols of query in compile time, you you just don't have any value. You can de define it by a type. Uh, you can uh, put all of parameters into the query uh, to make sure you like. Uh, don't uh, mess around it. Uh, uh, so you, you have just all of your all what need to to make request in like one object. Uh, you can uh, 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 serialize parameters because so, so you you require to serialize parameters and you can do it by introspection. Uh, so, for for the text, to uh, to send a query uh, to database, you need to uh, to make a string like this. So it has uh, placeholders for all uh, parameters. Uh, uh, the syntax is defined by uh, PostgreSQL protocol. So, uh, what you need to convert uh, this one into this one, and also add some uh, binary buffer with all serialized uh, uh, parameters values. So, uh, also you can do this, uh, sorry, also you can uh, uh, do stuff like this. So you can put into the query not the actual values, but references for this. And then, so you, you just have like template for, uh, for your query. It's uh, very convenient, for example, for insert. So you can just call as many times as you want, uh, try to assign the actual values and then call the request. Uh, so, to, uh, to store query text, we use uh, a HANA string, so we can have uh, uh, so we can have it in compile time, and we can we can even test it with uh, uh, with just static asserts. So if uh, if your values are able to be moved in moved and copy in compile time, like uh, integers, you can uh, do your query uh, in compile time. So we can avoid by this a lot of boilerplate code. We can provide type safety because we bind the value and the type into the query. Uh, we can uh, check uh, uh, is uh, database support our type uh, to make sure that we don't send to it. Uh, 
make some wrong stuff. And uh, you, you, for example, couldn't change uh, the type of your parameter uh, if you already created a query. So you, you send what, what you need. Um, another uh, tool to make query is uh, query configuration. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a file and uh, to the reason why you want to use it, uh, you, don't want, you don't want always to rebuild your code. So sometimes you want to change uh, your query uh, without rebuilding the code. And uh, for example, you have like some sort of bad situation in production and you just need to add like some limit into the query. And if you want to recompile it, for example, if it would take like an hour or so, usually it is the time to rebuild our uh, services. Uh, if you want to do this like in one minute, it's, it's very helpful. Uh, also, queries could depend depends on the environment, and uh, the easiest way just provide different configuration files. Uh, so don't make uh, if a statement for different configuration in your code. Just provide different configuration. It uh, will work better. Uh, the, the reason for different environment, so the, the two basics, one like production and testing, but also there are a lot of different, like you have testings for test, you have testings for uh, load tests, else you can have like different installations for public, for corporate. So there are a lot of environments and by configurations you can just, uh, uh, easy play with it. Uh, the syntax for configuration file uh, is uh, just uh, PostgreSQL query. Uh, so we, 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 but we annotate it with uh, special uh, comments. So to, pro to provide uh, the name of the queries and to provide some attributes. Uh, also, with uh, this, this syntax of parameter, you can uh, copy this query into uh, PostgreSQL uh, command line interface called PSQL, and it will work. So it's very convenient. Uh, to use uh, query configuration, you need to define a type for, for each query. Uh, so actually, it uh, uh, don't have any values. So you, you just have uh, like boost HANA string for the name to uh, provide ability in compile time uh, know uh, the name of the query, and you provide uh, parameters. If you want to use uh, like some structure, uh, you need also to provide uh, adaptation. Uh, to, to use introspection for the steps. Um, all queries uh, are stored in query repository. Uh, it, uh, so usually you construct it uh, when you start uh, uh, the program. And, uh, uh, and function which constructs it uh, we will check uh, for correctness uh, your query. So, uh, to get a query from query repository, you just need type. And uh, you both uh, get the query and construct it with uh, uh, specific uh, parameters values. So you couldn't, so, so to get query, it just cost uh, nothing in runtime. Uh, because you just uh, make selection by type, and to uh, and you couldn't uh, provide uh, wrong parameters uh, types. You just get uh, you'll get uh, compile error. Um, uh, 
so um, when we so how we can get uh, database result mm. so here just like we define the type we do, do, do define the value uh, so um, so why user uh, should allocate the place for uh, for uh, for the result uh, one reason is to provide uh, uh, similar uh, completion token signature for uh, for for all functions so you just you uh, you don't put it in your in a, in callback, for example, with uh, uh, one uh, more parameter. You just put it like, somewhere else. Uh, also, if you use, for example, uh, boost coroutines, you don't want to. Uh, you probably want to uh, uh, to place uh, the result on stack, or you you want to use some. Uh, a specific allocator, whatever. Uh, so uh, another uh, idea for result, uh, you so sometimes you want just to get a raw buffer uh, with uh, the result uh, because uh, you need some different kind of serialization on you don't even want to serialize it or deserialize it uh, so okay uh, if you if you want to use deserializing you can use introspection uh, you need to check uh, object identifiers to uh, to do not put uh, uh, run whatever type into uh, into result. So, for example, uh, uh, with raw result, we uh, have a container like uh, inter. We have class with container like interface uh, where you can just get the binary data, the size, uh, and uh, so uh, if you want mm. if you want to make uh, uh, the result uh, uh, not uh, so type it but uh, not a staple but uh, with the names of uh, the columns of the result you can uh, provide uh, a specific uh, class and you can use uh, uh, introspection so here you you couldn't make a mistake uh, uh, with the order of uh, values in the tuple for example you have query uh, like with two parameters one is the number uh, second is a string uh, or like two numbers they and they named differently but if you have tuple you just would put it in the same order with uh, uh, the type of row you can change the order with uh, you can change the order of uh, the result columns um, so something about uh, how we uh, so, so there's just just uh, like simple example uh, the, about the problem we faced uh, with uh, deserialization with HANA. So uh, the, the reason is uh, HANA members uh, function uh, returns the copy of values. You 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 couldn't get. Uh, anyhow the references from uh, from the adapted type so you 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 couldn't write the code like this but you you could do it in fusion so uh, 
it's uh, like very <laughs> um, very strange thing. Uh, so the solution to make it um, like probably more functional, so you don't change values in place, you just uh, collect at first all values into the tuple, and then you can uh, uh, construct it, uh, construct uh, the result type uh, using uh, Hanan pack. But uh, it uh, costs to call the move constructors for values. So the more uh, elements you have in your uh, structure, uh, the more it will cost to use the thing. It's, it's uh, not so. Would it not get optimized down after optimization? Or? Uh, so, so yes, but uh, if you if you have a really complex move constructor, it uh, will not. Uh, so okay, now we can look how we can make a request to the database. Uh, so just next, uh, uh, there are different approach how we can do a synchronous code. The first, the simplest one, just do the callback. Uh, so the signature for all uh, uh, for all function with uh, which provides some asynchronous separation is the same. You have uh, error code and you have a connection. So the reason why here we use out is because we don't really know the type of connection because uh, we have concept. So the actual implementation is uh, not really known at this stage. Uh, we can use futures. Uh, we can use uh, boost uh, um, stackless coroutines and we can use uh, stackful coroutines uh, so the last way like is more uh, convenient and more easy um, to provide uh, uh, to, to make it work uh, with all the sig signatures we need to use a special uh, special type as in completion uh, it uh, it is from uh, Bustasio. so here we like convert our completion token into into the callback so actually uh, library inside works only with callbacks so every code just built in it but when you so you convert it you provide it into a synchronous separation but then when you call get uh, the um, so, so for a different uh, completion token you will have a different behavior for example if you have a uh, callback get just do nothing if you have uh, a yield context uh, of uh, boost coroutine it will uh, suspend your coroutine and when uh, coroutine will be resumed get uh, will return uh, the second argument of uh, callback like uh, this one connectable type Um, so with uh, uh, database communication, uh, uh, we have uh, transactions, and uh, we have a, a kind of problem uh, with it because uh, you the database really ignores uh, like duplicates for uh, for operations to finish transaction and to begin tra transaction, and. Uh, Usually, if you do this, uh, it's some logic error in your code, uh, but uh, you you will not get any error, so it, it will just work and uh, 
database just will write something in interlock. Uh, but what we can do, we can define uh, trans transaction as uh, uh, implementation for connection concept, and then we can uh, use it as type to uh, to make sure that we uh, don't call uh, like any uh, we don't call uh, operations to finish transaction with connection object, not with transaction object, and uh, we we can uh, uh, so in, in another uh, reason we couldn't uh, start a new transaction if we have uh, if, if we have one already is there enough nested transactions? Huh? are you talking about nested transactions? no, no, it no, it is, it, it is impossible to make nested transaction. Right. Awesome. So you're, that's, that's what the problem is, right? Yeah. That you're okay. um, so another uh, like um, uh, another step in communication with database is uh, uh, at some time you don't want to store all of uh, rows uh, rows from the query into one vector. You want to proceed it like one by one. Uh, so th the reason for this, like, you already know that uh, there would be a lot of rows, like, uh, they d don't fit in your memory or something. And uh, another one is uh, you do you want to stream it. So you you, you really want to like uh, do. Uh, mm, just a lot of asynchronous separation. For example, you get one error from database and then uh, send it like in the result for HTTP request or something. Uh, so to do this, uh, uh, we user should so use user should do this uh, by special uh, result type cursor. Uh, we tell uh, the library to uh, to to be able to provide a specific interface to get the result. So every time we call fetch, we uh, we expect to get another one row. If we will get one. Uh, we can process it. If we will get nothing, it means we, at the end of the result, uh, so we can just do something else. Uh, this approach is uh, very useful for uh, boost uh, stackless coroutines. Uh, so imagine you, you want to do the library uh, to to call, for example, your handler for uh, for each row. So you you would make a lot of uh, problems with this. Uh, oh, sorry, it's uh, okay. I just mm. okay. Um, here is one problem with uh, Bustasio. So, I, so I, I, I probably. Uh, so here's just uh, Yoat uh, uh, with one parameter, and here just mutable and uh, opening of uh, uh, brace. Uh, so wh what do you expect? Uh, the value here. So, <laughs> any any suggestion? So so, uh, so, so uh, okay. I, I will try to guide you something. So we uh, make uh, IO context make uh, strand to synchronize all of our uh, to, to serialize all of our 
uh, asynchronous operation, we uh, spawn new coroutine, we uh, make uh, async completion to uh, convert uh, uh, our co completion token JavaScript context into handler, and then we post uh, uh, asynchronous separation in, into uh, into your context. It means uh, when a context will be ready to perform it, it will. So when, when you can call run function, uh, this uh, uh, callback will be executed. And inside it, we call another one uh, post with uh, uh, wrap it into strand uh, executor uh, and another callback. So it's like a, a simulation to, uh, to make a, a connection uh, in the shared pointer. So you see that we have a shared pointer that moved into our handler. So so we we think that we have only one reference to this pointer, but actually we not. We we will have here like two uh, two references. So the the reason is somewhere inside uh, strand wrap. It's uh, deprecated by now to use it. So. Uh, The, the solution just to uh, switch to latest uh, API and to use uh, special function bind ex executor. Uh, so one another problem problem with uh, 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 boost coroutines. Uh, imagine you have like some. Uh, some very deep recursion in your code and uh, it will uh, sometimes uh, your program could crash but you, you don't know so you, you will not see error like you uh, reach the uh, the bottom of stack you will get a crash in like some different place. And it, it's very hard to, uh, to debug this kind of problems. And usually the reason is just because y your stack is too small. But, um, but, but uh, it's uh, like, uh, you, you, you can't use any sanitizer for this because boost coroutines doesn't support it with it. Only the version 2 is supported, but Boost Asia doesn't support the uh, second version of Boost coroutines. So it's like, uh, could, could be a big problem. Okay, how we test our library? We use uh, GUnit. Uh, so it's based on Google test. Uh, I, there was a talk about this library on this conference. So it's uh, like, uh, like advance, advancement of uh, uh, Google test. Uh, you can provide uh, text. So, so it, it has a lot of uh, things. I just uh, will mention a couple. Uh, it has textual test description, which means you don't uh, require it like in uh, Google test to provide uh, the name for the test to be the name of function. So it uh, could be really complicated to make uh, uh, like a really good name for the test uh, with uh, these restrictions. If you have uh, just a string, it's, it's easy. You can, uh, uh, so it's a really important thing for us. We use uh, uh, mocks, and uh, in Google test, you require 
a macro to make uh, uh, to make mock. But uh, with this library, it uh, just uh, you can just use uh, a class with virtual functions. Uh, it will patch a virtual table to provide you uh, to provide you this functionality. But it has some disadvantages. So if you build your code with virtualized optimization. Uh, you will have a crash uh, usually by sick fault, which means you just access some diff some memory which you uh, doesn't need because uh, virtual table patching is like undefined behavior. So it's like cool to <laughs> use this thing, but uh, it, it like not so good. Uh, and the, if you will call uh, the test under. If you will run tests under undefined behavior synthesizer, you will have runtime errors also for this reason. Uh, so in our test, tests, we, uh, for asynchronous separation, we just check uh, the correctness for the order of uh, calling underlying uh, operations. Uh, because it, it, it really matters uh, which one you will use. So you can do like this with uh, GUnit. Uh, and to make it work, you need to provide uh, some specific implementation uh, for a connection concept. And you need to, uh, to make like class with just only virtual function. Uh, okay, now so, okay, is, is, uh, we had a talk here in this conference about how to use uh, Docker for build. We also use uh, Docker to build our library to, to, like, to, to develop it and to run tests. Um, so we, but, but, but we have a somehow different approach. We uh, put into the image. So, okay, just uh, first we will ask question, how many of us uh, have a deal with Docker? <laughs> okay, so I will speak a little bit about it. It is a container system uh, which, ba which based on uh, Linux C groups. H how many of you have deal with Linux? Okay, so uh, it uh, provides some sort of virtualization. Uh, so you, run, you can run process in, in the container, which will not have any access to your host system. But it is not like virtual machine. You, you don't restrict the resources to use. Uh, and uh, the overhead for uh, to, to run this con container is uh, really uh, small. So to use container, you need first to build an image uh, for container. Docker image is just uh, like uh, some file system with uh, with layers. We add layers uh, like by, by uh, executing some commands. So the really cool thing that you can use like any different Linux operation system as your base image. For example, you, you, you don't want to install all of new stuff onto your laptop and into your like some uh, uh, work computer. You, you just want to like launch some thing and you don't want to do some new thing on some, some old thing and you don't want to, to update, to downgrade. You just create Docker image. You install there all your stuff that you need. We also uh, build a boosting inside the uh, uh, construction of Docker image. And then you need to uh, provide some external. Uh, so you, you don't need, you, you can provide some external storages for these Docker images, which m means you can. Um, 
uh, you can just mount uh, some uh, some path on your file system into the Docker image. Uh, we use uh, path for Ccache because we use Ccache and uh, we don't want to store it inside the image. We want to store it outside because if you rebuild the image, you will lose all of uh, what inside. So we, we don't want to lose Ccache. Uh, and uh, we mount the code into, uh, um, into the image because we want uh, to be able to make a change of code, but not without uh, image rebuilding. And also, it, when you run the build, you have artifacts of the build, not inside the image, but outside in your file system. You, so it's really nice. Uh, so to uh, test, uh, to make integration tests for a library, we use uh, uh, Docker Compose to uh, organize containers. So it, it means we, so the container could be like standalone uh, process which runs and like do something stuff inside, but eventually you want to connect containers by network. For example, we have tests uh, for client library and we have database management system. We don't want to put them into one image because uh, we, we already, so the first reason we already have built image with uh, PostgreSQL and we can just uh, take it from Docker repository and run. Uh, and the second thing, we don't want to spend time to like build image with a bunch of stuff. We just want to be, build image with our code, that's all. Mm. Uh, Docker Compose can provide you uh, ability to set up a virtual network between the containers and uh, to provide communication with, between them. So uh, no one's outside uh, uh, couldn't get couldn't make a con connection into uh, these containers, but uh, two of them will communicate. Uh, so, and to, to run it, we just you, you just need to use special tool Docker uh, Compose. So, if you want to uh, build only unit tests, you just uh, like run one. <coughs> run one container. If you want to build an uh, integration test, first you uh, run container with database, then you run container with your uh, code. Okay, that's simple. And at the end, you need to stop the container and to remove it because uh, you, you will spend just uh, your disk for all the run and stop it containers. So and the code for integration tests looks like just uh, code of, of the uh, usage of library. You, you just do simple things with, without any mocks. Um, so and about performance. Um, so we, we not only experimenting with uh, like some features, we want to uh, really make a um, um, good uh, product for production. So we have to measure it. Um, so we have like installation for benchmark. So like if you're interested uh, what the specifics, you can like look at it. Uh, so, benchmark is really simple. Uh, in, in, in benchmarks, we use boost coroutines because uh, th th actually there is no significant uh, difference between using stackful coroutines and using uh, callbacks. So, 
but it makes uh, code much simple, simpler. Uh, here we have uh, uh, like really simple test. We just uh, establish a connection for each one request and try to measure it. Uh, do this in one thread. So actually, there is no specific thread. We just do it in main thread. Be because this is uh, a synchronous code, you don't actually care about threads. Uh, I, I mean, there is a lot of reasons to, to not to use uh, many threads. So um, the results, okay, some results. So we, uh, so that is time measured by uh, 90 Quantail, uh, it's uh, it, it it has a lot of like reasons to to do this. Uh, so uh, another test is like what if we want to optimize it? Uh, the first uh, um, the first approach is to uh, establish connection. Uh, at the beginning and then just to reuse it. So what's the results? So we have like 23 times faster than we establish connection each time. It's like uh, you, so, so it's like re really a reason uh, while you, sorry, uh, so the real reason why you want to uh, to reuse connections, but uh, um, you, you you couldn't write code like this. You actually need in product, uh, in your service like to store this connection somewhere. So you need a connection pool. Uh, so it's like a storage with connection, but. Uh, with a synchronous interface, uh, which means if uh, all connections are busy, you don't uh, uh, wait in the thread. You, uh, like your e execution context just uh, puts into some query and when uh, the connection pool will have uh, available connection, uh, the callback will be called. So we have like, some uh, drawback with uh, like some overhead with connection, but it's, it's, it's affordable. Um, and uh, in, uh, so in, in another one, uh, stage you don't want to usually you don't want to get a raw result you want to uh, put a result to, to, to get parsed result so you want to like to add uh, some parsing so here we have like or also some uh, uh, overhead but it, it looks like affordable of course uh, there was only integer, one integer, but uh, so the uh, more complex is to use uh, to use like some like really okay, question? Yeah, just a question about the hardware always mentioned it. Ah, there was a slide. Okay. Uh, so here's a request from, uh, so there is a library for Python uh, called async pg. Uh, so they're providing really good benchmarks. Uh, so and they, in some benchmarks, use uh, this request. It, it just requests for a PostgreSQL special uh, table pg type. Uh, to get all the types uh, from database. So it's like really uh, 
a more realistic example. Okay. Um, back in the, the query slide, um, where are the inputs? Like, am I understanding that uh, where in the query do you, do you have like do you have placeholders for the values that you're buying? So uh, as I yes of, of course there is a placeholders. Um, Okay, it was on the sli uh, slide back. Uh, so when, so I, I, I don't have actual slide with the algorithm to convert, uh, with code to convert uh, this uh, representation of query into uh, specific, but, uh, but, 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 but it, so, so there will be a placeholders and uh, it separate binary buffer. Maybe this question is a little delayed from earlier, but uh, do you require special types to be used as um, the values input to be um, uh, So you can, uh, so no, no. So, so uh, short question is no, but the longer is you need to adapt your types by boost HANA or boost fusion. So it has to have like that reflection that yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so we have like a lot of uh, disadvantage drawbacks uh, in uh, the request time, but we uh, like. But now, uh, actually, we should look at another uh, measurement uh, redraw speed uh, because. Uh, so, so at this point, we don't really care how fast we do the request because uh, they can have like uh, a various uh, a various different amounts of rows. So we want to measure now just uh, how many rows we get. Uh, so, and uh, what if we want to? Sorry. Okay, and and, and this uh, benchmark we had, uh, we have a raw result, which means we don't parse it. Uh, in the next one, we have we parse it. So we declare some type, we adapt it with Bustana, and we we just have all these fields in this value. Uh, so we, yeah, have some drawbacks, and uh, uh, and. Um, so the, the reason is uh, we need to copy a values from binary buffer. We, so in current implementation, we copy it. We can uh, like make a view, like make structure with pointers to specific uh, offsets in the buffer, but uh, it will make uh, it will be more complex to maintain this kind of code. Uh, so in the next one is, so all, all the benchmarks was with one connection, but uh, it's like not usual situation. Uh, usually you want to use like a lot of them. You want to like uh, use your CPU as maximum as possible. Uh, so this actually what happens in uh, asynchronous code. So. Okay, the uh, the host machine for this benchmark uh, has uh, 32 cores, so we actually can see that finally we get uh, some drawbacks uh, by increasing the connections after 32. And probably there are some between, but uh, uh, we don't actually care about this. Uh, we we care only that. So and the, the reason. Why is it so? Because PostgreSQL uh, launch standalone process for each connection. So at the same machine, you have like client in one process with one thread and 32 and other uh, processes uh, which uh, process these connections. Uh, and uh, there was with uh, 
uh, rows result and now we sparsed we uh, you like uh, at, at, at uh, eight connections we reach uh, reach the capacity because we just uh, use uh, CPU uh, one core of CPU at, at maximum so we just couldn't put more connection we just couldn't uh, perform more uh, asynchronous separation at like some uh, interval of time so that's all uh, thank you for listening and okay uh, uh, the library is published on github pull requests are welcome if you want to uh, join uh, and okay uh, thank you for listening any questions Okay. What what um, version of C plus plus are you guys targeting? Do you have like a specific version you're trying to support all the way back to C plus plus eleven or fourteen? Uh, no, actually, actually, we we don't want to try to do it. We uh, so now we require uh, seventeen C plus plus to build the code. I like that. <laughs> so it's it's like uh, we we want to like advance our. A team to make new compiler. It's like our goal. Uh, okay. So, do you remember the bots, uh, how many queries and uh, what are you building into your code and what's the compile time? How, how, ma how many queries? Uh, sorry. How, how many queries are you working with and uh, what compile time does it result in? Uh, so, we actually didn't test it, it in a lot of uh, queries. Uh, so, so uh, in our code and our services, uh, we um, the places where we don't use query configuration, uh, there are like just one or two queries, so it's like very little amount. Uh, where we use a lot, we use uh, usually con query configuration, and there are like uh, dozens, like fifty queries. Different queries. Well, I will test this compiles in twelve seconds. I think on my book, my book Pro. Mm. So it's, it can be uh, it can be a some some root machine. So it's it's uh, it's it's not so it's not so bad like when you're using, for example, a boot <laughs> Okay, so we you were mentioning the your compile time uh, within the hours range. No, no, it's it's not in the hours. So like uh, each uh, translation unit compiles in uh, like uh, less than a minute, like thirty seconds or so. So it it's not really bad, but um, it, it costs if you want to develop. If you like change to one line, and then you recompile the project. It it takes time. It's like not so convenient, but but it's affordable. <laughs> Sorry. Will you mind repeating what he said, just so that we get that on the audio? Uh, repeat uh, what I ah. say, because ah, okay. uh, you have a microphone. Okay, so uh, so we we use uh, query configurations where we, we have a lot of queries, and uh, we want to do this. Be another reason why we use it because we want able 
for database administrators to change queries quickly uh, for some inc when we have some incident where we want to like just fast uh, reaction for the situation. Any questions? No? Right, thank you.